guys, good to see you again. I say again because I've already shot this video once and my microphone turned off because my computer went to sleep. I figured I'd do the whole video over again because it couldn't get much worse. So I hope everyone had a good holiday season. Um, I hope if you were good, Santa brought you some nice Destiny tools and if you were bad, he brought you shards. This is the, uh, the sort of tail linkage assembly for the jeweler's lathe. Um, the first thing is why would I have gone with a linkage as opposed to a screw mechanism? Joe Pizinski actually did a really good video on drilling really small holes, and um, I would have to agree, it has a lot to do with um, sort of force feedback. Uh, when you're operating a lever, you get a lot more force feedback than when you're operating a screw. If you ever try to drill a really small diameter hole with a really big lathe, um, you'll probably only notice the force increase as you're driving the broken nub into the hole. So, so in the last video, we got about this far. Uh, I did go ahead and cut a slot in the back and drill a hole through. And I also put a number one Jacob's taper on the front, and I've got this uh, Shars chuck on here that's... Man, I mean... It's pretty amazing you can buy a chuck for $7. Anywho, um, I managed to uh, rush a little bit this week and get some of the rear linkage stuff done, so let's get right into it. First off, I'll go through some of the parts. Um, I'll start with this guy. This is sort of a base for the tailstock linkage. Uh, it's got two small links on it and, you know, this base component. I've got an E-clip pin on here just holding it together. I just happen to have it. Um, one thing I'm sort of finding with this project is that I'm not super happy with the way the pins are working. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm missing a whole bunch of pins because I didn't order until too late, basically, for the video. Um, but I, I like E-clip pins, but they don't look very nice, do they? So. I'm sort of open to any suggestions for how to pin things that look nice. I think ultimately what I'm going to end up doing is making my own pins. I think I've made peace with that, but until I get to that point, maybe, you know, get the small CNC lathe up and making some pins. Um, until I get to that point, I think I might just use dowel pins and use set screws to hold them in at the ends, but we'll see. Um, I'm also going to have to stand these pins off a bit because I really don't want anodized aluminum rubbing on itself because it'll scratch up and just looks so awful. This is a similar component, it's sort of a base link for the Z plunger. Um, this is the Z plunger itself. So that's going to sort of go in a bushing and that'll go in the back here. And that'll move the Z carriage, you can't really see it, there you go. That'll move the Z carriage in and out like that. I don't have the bushings yet, again, order too late and now I'm just sort of sheepishly waiting. Alright, so let's start putting this together. So this is interesting, uh, these marks here on, uh, on the anodizing. These aren't actually scratches. Anodizing is actually a very hard material. So what this is, is this is just built up aluminum from the other parts that have been touching it. So this is actually wear off of these components from test fits and things. It's always worth it if you've got a big scratch on your anodizing to just have a sort of uh, a rub at it and see if it comes off. Because odds are if it's on aluminum, it'll come right off. So this base link is actually going to connect to this thicker link here. And like I said, I don't have any proper pins, so I'm just going to use fasteners. Um, before you mention it in the comments, let me just preface this by saying that fasteners are a horrible choice for pins. Um, the threads on the fasteners um, actually act as stress risers. So if you think about it, the root of all of these threads actually gives cracks a place to start and propagate so very poor choice for a pivot but it's all I have all right folks that back up um, so the next sort of uh, important part that I made here is kind of this trunnion piece so you can see I've actually got plastic washers there should be a plastic washer there so put these plastic washers on Attach the link like that. So this is a bad example because uh, this link is actually a hair too thick. Um, I'm going to have to go back and trim that down. But the idea at least is that uh, this boss is going to be a little bit proud of this surface. So I can tighten the fastener on as much as I want. And it shouldn't ever lock up.
I did continue to manual machine all these parts, but I encountered a problem with this guy. So I spent an entire night machining this stupid part. Um, and then I realized I made a mistake because I put the, uh, the stupid angle the wrong way. So I actually cut 30 degrees instead of 60. Um, so I <laughs> rushed back and just did this on the CNC just so I didn't fall behind in my video. But yeah, certainly manually machinable, but it wasn't pleasant and it was pretty frustrating. Uh, so this actually goes on here like that. And like I said with the last one, the boss actually is proud, so I'd be proud too if I were a boss. Tighten this right up, and it should still pivot just fine. Um, all right. Okay, so we've got this assembly here now. What I can do, refocus. All right, so I'm going to put this trunnion on the Z pusher rod like that. Now this is actually still free to rotate, and that's actually going to be how you lock the carriage. So there's going to be a screw mechanism on the carriage that this actuates. I thought that would be pretty cool. Um, and because we have plastic spacers on the other side, we got to have plastic spacers on this side. So I'm going to pop those in. These are, uh, these are actually just um, M6 plastic washers from McMaster. Even cheaper than a dime a dozen. Alright, so... Uh, that's sort of how that's going to work. Uh, I don't have the right bushing because, again, I didn't order it in time. But suffice it to say, when I have the right bushing, it's going to work perfectly. Um, I'm going to pop this collar on here for now. This isn't what the actual design is going to be. I just uh, haven't done any of the knobs or the handles yet because I wanted to do them on the machine itself. I thought that would be poetic. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there we go. There's that link there. Lots of hand fitting to do. I'm not going to call this done whatsoever. This still has to go out for anodizing. Uh, and before that, I'm going to make sure I've deburred everything, make sure everything fits all nice. I might be knocking some bushings into this too, just to make it pivot a little better. But, you know, we'll see. It's certainly not film worthy. So there you can see that still rotates. So that should be good for locking this up. All right. Um... So for the tailstock pivot, it also just has a base component here, and this is going to fit on the back. I didn't put this E-clip together on camera because I would have struggled with it for hours. I don't know if my, uh, my editing software can fast forward fast enough to get through that, so... This is the tailstock handle, so I'm just going to knock this through here, and I'm going to pop a uh, just a fastener in. Again, that's not permanent. I'm actively seeking advice on what to use for pins, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll just uh, pin that as well. There we go. So. So why did I settle on this lever configuration? Well, please enjoy this short cutaway. So when we're designing a linkage system like this, basically what we're trying to do is convert an angular motion into a linear motion. So I've got this linear slider down here, I've got a pivot here, and I've got a lever here. The first thing you'll notice about this system is that it doesn't work. It doesn't do anything. The problem is that as this arm rotates, it wants to also extend this linear element sideways, basically. So it'll want to bend it. Um, it'll basically just bind up immediately, so that's not going to work. So the next thing you could try would be a slot system like this. You can see the pivot is free to ride in this slot, so you'd have like a pin or something in there um, that would slide along here. The problem with that is that I wasn't confident I'd be able to execute this very well, and you also lose a lot of force when you get further out here. You can imagine pulling on this arm and most of it, most of the force making this want to bend, and only a little bit of the force making it want to retract. So I didn't think it would go well. You could do a non-linear slot, so you could make it curved or something, uh, and that would optimize where the force was going, but I didn't like my odds of being able to do that with manual machines. So the option I ended up going for was just using pure linkages like this. So basically to compensate for the pivot wanting to move left and right as I go through the stroke, I added a smaller link here, and this way you can see it compensates for that motion. 
as with the previous example, I'm losing a lot of force further back in stroke, but I figure most of the work I'm going to be doing is going to be sort of far forward on the machine. Uh, so I don't think that'll be too much of a problem. Alrighty, welcome back. Hope that was interesting at least. I guess the next part of kinematically designing levers is where the actual lever extends out. I was trying to do this ergonomically, so I was trying to have everything actuatable in sort of this direction. Um, I don't like the idea of pushing towards a machine to do anything. So if you pushed into a machine really hard to say drive the bit in, and something broke, you'd be going face first in the machine, so I don't really like that idea. I really do like the idea of pulling to engage things, so that's kind of how this works. Um, and then everything is, uh, yeah, I think everything's at a pretty comfortable angle for, for me at least. These uh, double bars that I've used here, these are actually not finished. These are going to get a handle at the end, um, although they do look pretty cool. Uh, the idea here is that if I were going to CNC this, I would really just cut a whole single piece thing out um, or even just water jet something out, something two dimensional, and that would be nice and easy. But I wanted to make something nice looking and I also wanted to make it um, doable with like scrap material. So all these links take fairly small pieces of aluminum. Um, and the rod is super cheap. This is A2 rod and it's, you know, really inexpensive. So I think next up is going to be the carriage. Um, there's going to be some work underneath it to make it work with this sort of uh, future screw mechanism to tighten it up. I wanted to have the tightening system back here because I didn't want to have to reach into the cutting area to tighten stuff down. And uh, I also didn't want to have to try to tighten up the lever because the lever would still be tight, but this would still be flopping around, so that's no good. So I didn't actually get the tailstock CAD and drawings up to my Patreon. Um, I would just attribute that to holiday busyness, but I'm going to roll that into uh, the linkage release as well. Really, it was only three parts to, uh, to do the drawings for, and that hardly seems worth an entire drawing package, so... I'll do the tailstock and the, the bushing caps and all the links and stuff. And yeah, so if you follow me on Patreon, then uh, please enjoy those and let me know if you have any problems making anything. All right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this installment of the Jewelers Lathe video. I've got some really big plans for 2018, so hopefully everyone's as excited about that as I am. I'm toying with the idea of putting out sort of a channel description, vision statement-y kind of deal for, for 2018, but, you know, we'll see how that goes. Um, I know I want to get into sort of funner projects. A lot of the projects I've been doing have been uh, sort of fairly serious projects like, you know, CNC lathe, jeweler's lathe, um, you know, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, hopefully some projects that are just fun and, you know, a little more attainable for people who have fewer tools because I was once there too. I once didn't have any tools whatsoever and I, you know, used to be able to cut a two by four and a half with a Dremel back then, but yeah. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Cheers.